Hi guys, I'm Kara with Birdies and Roots. On my channel I talk about healthy and simple living, so if those are interesting to you, uh, please hit the subscribe button. Today we're going to talk about ways that you can save a ton of money on your household consumable products. Of your budget. That was ridiculous. I don't even know, I can't remember. Today we're going to talk about one of the things that I get asked a lot is how can we save money on our grocery bill? So we eat a super uh, healthy, you know, allergen friendly diet. It is expensive. It has been one of our family's biggest challenges. So one of the ways that we've been able to reduce costs for our grocery bill is to eliminate spending on our consumable products. So we've actually been working on this for quite a few years, just cutting, cutting, cutting. It is one of the fastest ways that we can just blow our budgets. There are so many products now that are advertised to us. They are advertised as green and healthy when often that's not necessarily the case. So some of the things I'm going to talk about today are ways that you can either eliminate purchasing the items altogether or you can decrease your spending by product swapping. Let's start with the place where most of us spend the most amount of time, the kitchen. So one of the first things that we did to eliminate additional spending in our home is to stop using paper towels. So we still buy, you know, a, a few rolls of paper towels here and there to keep on hand for really nasty messes, but we use white rags and they are pretty cheap. They last us years. We have enough of them where we can wash about once a week. And man, guys, I, if I use paper towels the way that I use these things, we would be spending probably I don't know, 10 to $20 a week just on, you know, throw away products. So I'll just grab one of these from next to the sink. I will dry something off or I'll wipe something down. Um, throughout the day, they get dirty. I just toss them into a bin that I keep in my kitchen. And as the bin fills, I start a load of laundry. I wash them, I fold them, I stick them back in the kitchen. I buy white. You can buy other colors, but I like white because they can be bleached. And I think for like $20, you can get two dozen of these things. So for about the cost of a dozen rolls of paper towels, you can get yourself some reusable cloth rags. Alternately, if you want to save even more money, you can cut up some old t-shirts. Those work really well for cleaning rags in the kitchen and around the house. And also, I know people use flour sack towels that I think you could get at some of the, you know, grocery stores or Walmart or wherever, you know, is local to you. So those can be cut into squares and you can use those and, and wash them when you're done. Uh, the next thing in the kitchen that we use is cloth napkins. So we have never been big on actual disposable paper napkins. I, I don't know, we, we just never liked them. It was never a habit. We were into purchasing them, but we would kind of fold up a, a paper towel and use those at the table instead. So last year I found some cloth napkins that I love from Ikea. I think they were like $3 and it was a six pack. So I got three six packs. That's enough to last our family, you know, throughout the week. They can be bleached. They, you know, they hold up really well. They're super soft. The kids like them. Even the ones I have are kind of color coded. So the kids like to be able to pick which color they're choosing. Um, it's silly, but you know, it helps them remember to use a napkin at the table, which before they just didn't really care that much and they would wipe it on their sleeves. Let's be honest, they're kids, that's what they do. So we love having our cloth napkins. So the next one's kind of a small thing. It's something you may not think about, but coffee products. If you are using a drip coffee maker, you might know that occasionally you have to repurchase your coffee filters. Now we have a coffee maker that came with a reusable washable coffee filter and it works great. So that's one less thing to purchase. Uh, if you are into uh, different types of coffee or if you're you're wanting a less traditional drip coffee maker you can go with a pour over style and those come with a um, reusable filter for those as well i'll link one below that i found that looks great that has the reusable coffee filter as a pour over if you have a k-cup system you probably know this already but they have reusable k-cups that you can buy online i've seen them in stores 
and you just find the size that fits your unit and you can refill it with coffee and that will save you a ton of money because we've purchased k-cups for travel before that have our like favorite style coffee and they are so expensive i mean i think that they can triple or quadruple the price of your cup of coffee in the morning so if even if you're you know not interested in reducing waste it just saving money you can save a ton just by purchasing bagged coffee and using those reusable k-cups on that same vein if you are using individual packets of sugar or sweeteners and creamers, that's a great way that you can save money by eliminating those products. It is so much cheaper to just buy a quart or a pint or you know, make your own creamer and buy a bag of sugar. Sugar is one of the things you really can't go wrong buying in bulk. The next way you can save money in the kitchen is to stop buying Ziploc bags. Now, if you prefer glass dishes, you can get a Pyrex. They have the snap-on lids. That's what we have. Um, even the plastic ones are better than the throwaway Ziploc bags. Um, they even now have reusable Ziplocs. They're not by Ziploc brand, but they're silicone. They have a seal top. It seems, it feels a little bit and has a shame, same shape as a Ziploc bag so that if you are you know committed to that style for a sandwich or um, maybe your pre-cut cheeses or things like that that's a really great way to save money is to go ahead and invest in a couple of the um, reusable silicone bags and put your leftover food in there instead the next one is a really popular tip uh, stop buying plastic water bottles. You can buy so many adorable cups now that are reusable for on the go. We bought our Hydro Flask bottles about five years ago. They've really become a popular brand and man, that's for a reason. I, we have not had any trouble with these. We have not had any leaking with these. I, we've got one one or two dents in them, but we use them for everything. We like the straw lids. The kids can use them well. They hold up so well. So, I mean, an in initial investment, yeah, it was a little bit overwhelming, but we've gotten our money back tenfold on these reusable water bottles. If you really like filtered water, and that's one of the reasons why you've been purchasing bottled water, there are a lot of alternatives to that. One being a countertop or sink mount water filter. A lot of refrigerators also come with them now. That's way better than just drinking tap water. And then also if you do not have access to that or are unable to do that for some reason, you can get reverse osmosis filtered water at a lot of health food stores. So you would buy the jugs and then you would take those to the store and refill them. We have a Berkey water filter system. We've had it for, I think, three years. We love that thing. I mean, yes, you have to like feed it every day. We refill the water filter. It is a countertop system, but we like that we could take it with us when we are going places for travel. We've used it for that and um, we love the way the water tastes. We have brought it on trips. Having that system with us was amazing. Now filters are just everywhere. You can even get a Brita countertop or you know you just put it in your fridge if you want refrigerated water and you can use those and I think it's like $30 and then you just replace the filters as you go. And the next thing is it's not necessarily a kitchen item, but packaged food. If you're buying individually wrapped packaged foods, um, you know, granola bars, snack packs, things that are just one serving, those are really convenience foods. And so, yeah, it can be a terrible habit to get into. I've done it myself. We fall into ruts. We get into busy stages of life where we need easy easy fast food so you know if you can just get out of the habit of having those and eating them in your home you know have them for emergency food that's what i call them you know where we have them in there in the bottom of your bag just in case somebody gets really hangry but try and stop eating those packaged foods inside your house the next category we're going to segue into is cleaning a lot of these products you will use in the kitchen the first being your cleaning product like surface cleaner you can make your own. I buy reusable bottles or I in the past have even just 
had a cleaner that we had used all of. I'd rinsed it or washed it out and then I'd filled it back up with the cleaner of my choice that I was making at home. And often that is a you know, solution of vinegar, water, and some sort of essential oil. I really like Thieves now. It's you know kind of pre-mixed. You use a tablespoon and you throw it into your spray bottle, and then we can use that all week. And I think it's, it probably ends up being you know, 50 cents or less per spray bottle, which will last a week or two for us. So definite cost savings in making your own. And they really work well. I mean, I feel like we see so many commercials for products that, you know, are supposed to be bigger and better than the next one, cleans better, smells better, works better. And the stuff that I make at home I don't feel like I need anything to work any better. So having something that you can mix at home, you always have those things on hand. You've got the vinegar, you've got baking soda, you've got borax, or, you know, hydrogen peroxide, rubbing alcohol, and then your essential oils. Those things you're not purchasing every month. You are buying them maybe quarterly or every half year, and then you'll use them up before you buy them again. And so you just can mix and match depending on what you're needing to clean, you can just use those products. The next tip is if you are going to buy paper towels, buy the select a size. They are about this big a sheet instead of the larger roll. And so if there's something, you know, kind of sticky or gross that you need to clean up and you don't want to use a regular rag, you can, you know, use a smaller piece of paper towel instead of a big one from the roll. The next cleaning item is also kind of a kitchen item and that's dish soap. So we do have like a bottle somewhere of Dawn. Um, we've used it on grease stains and um, things here and there. I think it's probably one bottle's lasted us five years. But what we use now for dishes is uh, Dr. Bronner's Castile Soap. So I have this one. This is the baby version. It's unscented. Um, we actually use this upstairs, which is why I had it <laughs> to grab real quick. But um, we we use the peppermint. They come in all different, um, you know, fragrances. They're scented with essential oils. So you can choose depending on which one you prefer. But we buy them by the gallon. And I think it's like $50. We usually order from Frontier Co-op and that's um, I think within the 30 to $40 range for a gallon and that will last us six months. It's something that is often heavily diluted so you don't need that much. Um, it goes a really long ways and we also use that for a lot of other purposes which I will go into a little bit further along in the video. So the next item on the list is dish detergent. You can either buy the big bottles or the big boxes, but you can save a lot of money not using the pods. Those are definitely a convenience item and you pay extra for them. So just pouring in your dish soap the old fashioned way, um, don't use actual dish soap. Make sure that it's dishwasher dishwasher soap because uh, you will have bubbles everywhere. And I had a coworker that did that. Another option is finding a subscription service that you can order your pods from if you are, or even, you know, your, your pour in detergent. Um, a lot of these services offer you these products at a kind of a discounted rate. I think we get our preferred soap for 15% off through Amazon subscribe and save. Maybe you can find a different service, but that's something that's super easy for me where I don't have to think about it anymore. And dishwasher soap is something that I use the same amount of every month. I mean, I think we run a load of dishes every day, you know, so I can get a box of 30 pods or, you know, calculate our, however long it takes you to use your bottle or box of dishwasher soap and put it on the subscription service. And so it, I think typically you're going to be unlikely to get too much of the product and almost all those services allow you to pause if you end up with a surplus and that way you're not spending additional money on a product that you don't need. The next item is sponges. So we use a it's called an e-cloth sponge and unlike a lot of the other sponges that we were using 
it's not as disposable. It is very sturdy, kind of like a rag material, and it holds up for a really long time. So that's one way that we save money is by not having to buy a bunch of sponges. And you can also use washcloths. They work very well for cleaning dishes and they dry quickly. The other option is a dish brush. Now, I love these things. They have them with you know natural fiber and recycled materials and all of that fun stuff. I mean, it'll last you a really long time. So that's something that you can buy once. You can get them for about $6 and it is way cheaper and they work better than, you know, a disposable sponge. The next category on our list is body care products. So if you are using the disposable face cloths, pads, you know, makeup removers, things like that, you can actually buy cloth reusable pads now. And um, what you can do is you can just dip it in whatever your product is that you're using and you can apply it that way. And then you can just throw it in your hamper and wash it with all you, the rest of your clothing. So I'm gonna sound like a hippie on repeat here, but one of the other ways that we save money is we stop buying body washes and you know specialty soaps and uh, even showering like shave gel. So we use Dr. Bronner's and you dilute it and you can use um, a brush or loofah or you know rag or whatever it is and you just go about your business and wash your body and you can even use it on your hair I know people that wash their hair with it you just make sure to dilute it really well like I said it can be bought in bulk and that saves you even more money the next item on the list is to stop using like a disposable plastic loofah in the shower you know i mean they don't cost very much i think they're just a couple of dollars but if you have to replace them a couple times a year then that adds up so this is the body brush that i use in the shower it's super tiny i think it was actually intended as a face brush it's by bass company so it's got 100 percent pure bristles not sure pure what maybe bores probably bores and uh, I love that thing that's what I use instead of having a loofah another way to save money is to stop buying specialty skincare products you know there's a lot of natural items now that people are finding work as well if not better than the mixed products that they buy at the store so some of my favorite skincare items are activated charcoal bentonite clay apple cider vinegar and uh, witch hazel. Very similar to the cleaning products, I don't feel that desire to go out and buy the stuff that's marketed to me because the stuff that I'm using is simple, cheap, and it works really well. So I'm not tempted by all the commercials and all the social media marketing on you know these products that are promising amazing results when there are very natural products that work amazingly well. So the next tip is to stop buying disposable hand soap pumps. Now you can go a couple different ways with this. You can either buy a refillable, like a big jug to refill your pump dispensers with, or you can buy the foaming hand soap pumps. We actually have some from when we used Bath and Body Works products 15 years ago, and you can fill a couple tablespoons of Dr. Bronner's with the rest water, and that thing will foam for like six months, and it works really well. It cuts the grease, it cleans your hands, it's soap. The last item in the skincare category would be reusable razor blades. So if you're still buying the cheapo disposable razors, you should really look at getting a handle and swapping out the blades on it. If you're a man, you might really be interested in getting one of the old safety razors. Those things are super trendy now. My husband was into them for a really long time. You can get them brand new for around $20 and you just swap the blades. The blades are like 10 cents each. And you can also get them refurbished, restored vintage on Etsy and places like that. Also, some of the shave clubs, um, depending on your needs and your family's needs, that's something that we've done in the past and we ended up with so many razor blades and it was, I think, 
you know, maybe we spent a total investment of around $25 and, you know, we ended up with blades for two years. One of the next items that I will not go totally into depth with, I'll let others review those for you, but uh, feminine care products is another way that it's really easy to save money now. You can buy reusable pads or you can buy the, you know, menstrual cups and those will save you a ton of money. You're also using less disposable products and um, you're avoiding a lot of toxic chemicals where, you know, now there's a, a lot more information coming out about the fact that a lot of companies are spraying the cotton with pesticides and then, you know, are you're putting it on your body or in your body. So definitely check out the reusable products. It's something I've been doing myself for about 10 years since I discovered cloth diapering for my first son and it has been a game changer and I will never go back. The next category on the list to save money is your laundry room. Now, uh, if you are still buying dryer sheets, please stop. You can buy dryer balls now and they work really well. Uh, we've been using dryer balls for, I don't know, six or seven years. We stopped using dryer sheets way before that. I could not stand the smell. They are so strong. I can tell when people use them when I'm like next to them in the grocery store. So my next just general tip would be to have a more frugal mindset and to think about your goals. Okay, so what's your reasoning behind cutting back on some of these costs? Is it because you just truly can't afford it? Is it you're trying to make more room in the budget for something else with a higher priority? If you can keep that front and center in your mind, that will help you make better decisions all along the way. So one of the things that I do is almost like an image board or what do they call those things? An inspiration board? Okay. Anyway, like an inspiration board, you can have something in a place that you're gonna see it quite frequently that can kind of remind you of your goal. So just having a picture of that item can help you keep your focus. And then the last, tip I have is to think before you buy something. Is it necessary for this item to be disposable? Do I need disposable straws? Do I need disposable cutlery or paper or plastic plates? Like, is this item required for this specific event? Do you, Is there something that I can replace this with at home with what I already have and eliminate the purchase altogether? All right, so those are my tips on how you can save money on the consumable products category of your grocery budget. If you've got any tips that you'd like to share with our viewers, please leave them down below in the comment section. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Bye.